हेलो एवरीवन प्राइम मिनिस्टर फॉर्मलाइजेशन ऑफ माइक्रो फूड प्रोसेसिंग एंटरप्राइजेस पीएमएफएमए स्कीम अडॉप्ट्स वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट अप्रोच टू रीप द बेनिफिट ऑफ स्केल इन द माइक्रो फूड प्रोसेसिंग सेक्टर अंडर दिस वी निफ्टम थंजावुर आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग अ वेबिनार ऑन पल्स प्रोसेसिंग एंड वैल्यू एडिशन session uh we have with us dr gn hari haran executive director in charge ms swami nathan research foundation chennai sir will be going to provide us insights on the initiatives of pulse bio park we welcome you sir the session is over to you to present the important work of uh, pulse bio park to the august audience you know the pulse bio park is a very innovative idea and a brain child of professor ms swami nathan this is to increase the fruit legume production and consumption for ending the uh, endemic hunger especially hidden hunger we otherwise known as pro- hunger of hunger for proteins in the human body and uh, if we really look at in recent times pulses are becoming a cash crop in developing countries and there is a steep rise in food prices in india over the last 30 years especially pulse the prices are going up and uh, if you really look at the uh, asia as a whole it accounts for around 45% of global pulse production and remains as a major producer importer and consumer but nowadays pulse is you know the demand for pulse is also keep on steadily increasing when you look at uh, pulses they are climate smart crops especially in tamil nadu after the uh, rice production the farmers will go for black gram production and uh, it's only with the residual moisture and uh, still they will be in a position to really enrich the soil and also able to get a good harvest of the black gram if you really consider uh, the production of, for the production of 1 gram of uh, 1 kilogram of pulses we require around 1250 liters of water whereas when it comes to beef production we need somewhere around 13000 liters of uh, from water for the production of 1 kg of meat so this is the uh, status when it comes to uh, pulp deficient regions in the world uh, there are uh, you know um, certain areas completely you know uh, go in a negative manner for example the entire uh, india and uh, the the whole um, region is deficient to the tune of minus 4.5 with respect to south asia in million metric ton by region 20 north america which is on the positive side where it is plus 4.9 production million metric tons from for that region uh, even the latin america and the caribbean especially the developing region are uh, with respect to efficient uh, deficient regions and so on and uh, when it comes to mssr of approach uh, in the pulse bio park we uh, look you know we look at uh, four different agro ecological uh, ecosystems as our f- key focus and we focus on food legumes developing a pro nature model for ensuring food and nutrition security improved technologies and governance to increase the productivity and the farm income so we started looking at uh, four key ecosystem one is on the koraput odisha it's more more known for its medicinal plant diversity the tribal population uh, especially the endemic hunger for proteins are very very low uh, very you know the levels are very low and hence this region is selected and within tamil nadu we have selected one location called pudukote which is again a dry area it's completely arid and uh, around you know there are villages but beyond villages very close to the forest there are smaller hamlets so around 63 hamlets we have taken and uh, there is another district in tamil nadu called virupuram this is again a dry region it's sandwiched between pondicherry and tamil nadu and puducherry also it is coastal coastal tropical humid uh, ecosystem very close to the beach uh, region and so on uh, specifically we focus more on the pulses especially i have given them in the table so i don't need to read them again it is mostly green gram pgnp and groundnut and uh, so this is what 
and in the Vilupuram, it is more black gram because the farmers are more interested in the production of uh, black gram and uh, moth bean and uh, groundnut. And uh, again in Puduseri, if you really look at it, it is moth bean and groundnut. And uh, the soil parameters, especially after the Rabi, the uh, rice fallow is used for the cultivation. Here, the key concern is concern are pre-production and uh, especially when it comes to pulses, Today morning onwards, learned speakers are talking about the low seed replacement rate. Uh, you know, we need to have highly improved varieties so that the productivity can be matched. Cultivation of traditional varieties are still continuing and limited access to credit for farm inputs and timely availability of quality inputs. This is at the pre-production level itself. We, uh, especially those farm farmer stakeholders whom, with whom we are working, we explain all these things and try to get them aware about all these things. When it comes to production pulse, always because it is on the fallow and others, it is low productivity, issues related to nutrient management. Mostly pulses are not given fertilizer or whatever it is. And irrigation also we have demonstrated the critical irrigation really enhances the pulse production. But when it comes to pulse, uh, pest and diseases, no much inputs are given. Post-production also, value addition and processing on the farm gate is whatever technique farmers are known, uh, aware about, they used to do. After that, it is simply stored in, uh, you know, whatever facility they have. And uh, farmers, um, especially in the post-production, now we have some methodologies wherein we farm the grassroot level institution where they join together for value addition and processing. But still, the production is highly very low, so it is limited. And uh, after they produce, they, the middlemen come in and uh, they immediately wanted to take the produce without giving any good margin to the farmer. And uh, consumers, we wanted products with quality control, but right now, only few companies who are processing pulses are with quality control. Otherwise, by and large, it is a kind of a um, call, you know, we get the material without much quality. Next. Next slide. Yeah. So, levels of integration of horizontal and uh, vertical value chains. This is where we wanted to involve both our uh, product producers and also the consumers together. And the, when the vertical integration, uh, we um, look at uh, various products independently. When it comes to black gram, it is primary processing, grading, aggregation and storage for you know, delayed marketing. The moment we sell it immediately, then the products are not getting very good uh, you know, for a price. Similarly, for the groundnut also, once they process it and uh, grade it, after that, if they sell, they are able to, the farmers, especially farmers are able to get good price so that they can meet the end. And in the green gram also, you can see that. And uh, in all these cases, forward integration with the consumers, uh, we with the farmer producer organization, which is direct selling to the wholesale traders or consumers. And that is really helping the farmers to get the good price, whatever you know they have used for the production, they are able to get it instead of simply giving it to the middleman. Next. Next slide. Yeah, so in that process, we followed some innovative ideas. So basically, there are several varieties, both traditional varieties are some kind of an, uh, new varieties that have come in and all those things are there. With the farmers, we conducted participatory varietal selection involving both men and women farmers and demonstration plots helped the, helped the farmers to identify which pulse is growing very well which is more water efficient when it comes to pest and diseases, which is good. And when it comes to the quality of the seeds and the varieties, uh, you know, that helped the farmers to choose the best variety for themselves. And it helped to increase the seed replacement ratio. Earlier, what the farmers are, you know, you, they used to tell us, especially in Pudukote, they used to say that uh, this is our age old seed. We kept it in the house and every year we sow and whatever that is coming. A section, we will keep it as a, Seed. But now, the availability of some of the new material, they are able to really see the benefit and uh, 
seed replacement is also happening and it is more than 80% that is heartening in the case of black gram, green gram and groundnut. And uh, varietal replacement ratio was also very high in more than 90% in all the field sites. That is, uh, that is also, you know, especially when this type of new material is shown to the farmers, they are ready to adapt. This is what the whole exercise demonstrates. And when it comes to behavioral change, sorry, the previous slide, behavior, the process was uh, supported both men and women farmers to know the importance of quality seeds. Otherwise, what in, in, the area, in the area of pulses, the farmers, especially in the remote locations, are having difficulty in even getting the, new, the name of the new material and also quality seeds. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, so these are all the varieties selected and the best farmed varieties and the farmers adapted. Uh, there are, you know, this many number of farmers immediately they were able to, you know, select the material and uh, go, go for that instead of simply holding to the previous material when it comes to the black gram. And similarly in groundnut also, lot of new varieties. You can always see the second column. It's only the uh, new varieties which are getting selected and they keep going. Next. Integrated crop management practice also. You know, earlier they used to simply sow the pulse seed and they come back. But right now, we also demonstrate site-specific approaches, varieties and quality seeds. Increase, you know, I already spoke about it. And uh, for pulse cultivation also, we ensure soil test based on nutrient application and other things are happening. Nutrient spray. Earlier, there was no spray. So we gave the DAP spray and the at the time of flowering with the crucial uh, water uh, irrigation facility. And post-harvest storage or losses also reduced by introducing triple layered bag. Earlier, it was only a, a very um, kacha structure where a lot of infestation used to happen. This triple layered bag reduced the, um, given when the moisture levels are high in the uh, area, especially uh, the pulse will be get harvested in the month of April, May. In the month of June, immediately with the rains, um, much of the pulses which are stored in uh, you know, bins and others used to get uh, mold uh, formation. But this triple layered bag, especially after drying it in sunlight and so on, it uh, really gave the best results. And they were, they were able to, sh um, you know, the shelf life of the pulse itself is very high, more than a year and so on. Next. These are all some of the uh, field areas. We introduced integrated crop management uh, practices. You know, in the uh, buns, they used to cultivate other materials so that farmer can get uh, all kind of uh, pulse varieties within the same field. Next. On-farm demonstration is a very important component, especially when we expect uh, the resource-poor farmers to adapt to new technology. What they, they say is, seeing is believing. After seeing some of the demonstration plots, the next year, the adoption levels in the farmers are very high. And when it comes to moth bean or black gram or groundnut, the Villapuram farmers took a lead and they wanted all these things to be demonstrated to them so that they can choose the best. Next. So pulses area under production when it comes to uh, Vilupuram, uh, the varieties, the, the crop and the varieties are given here. And uh, the number of farmers who are adapting and the area, the number of acres, that is also increasing. So Vilupuram is stopped. And uh, when it comes to Koraput, because of the hilly region, it is more of a Eastern Ghats location and tribal farmers, still the adoption is very high. 820 farmers are adapting and 90, 931 acres of, uh, you know, this hilly region is now seeded with uh, all these pulse variety. And the best thing in Koraput is the families, especially tribal farm, uh, farm families, after listening to the nutrition deficiency or how pulses can help them to improve their protein content in their diet and so on, they started consuming the cultivated material. Pudukote and uh, Puducheri, there are some limiting factors when it comes to the water availability and so on. That's the reason the number of farmers adapting them and also acreage, especially Pudukote, 
there is very highly highly limited area available with a little bit of irrigation or whatever it is next so large scale demonstration in pudukottai is also happening but uh, when it comes to water availability this is where the uh, you know here also it, it is mentioned that failed due to low rainfall only 20% yield realized and so on it's a uh, you know gambling especially the farmers life of india uh, is guys a gamble between monsoon and the market here whenever there is a good rainfall we also introduce water harvesting structures so that they can capture water and irrigate the pulse crop and so on so this is one of the reason in pudukode district this this uh, people are not able to get a good deal and that also adapted next again there are a lot of images to impress upon the audience about the um, multiple activities that are happening and uh, we are very happy to share the data we even um, when we work in a whole panchayat we call that area as a pulse panchayat so it was easy to almost speak to all the farmers in and bring them together to and see what kind of a demonstration is happening and what is good and what is not good and all those things so the entire uh, panchayat region they start cultivating one pulse variety and after that the volume is affected and with that volume we were able to come out with some you know this one district one uh, one product uh, those kind of uh, slogans it will be possible only when we generate adequate quantity of uh, this kind of raw material so that we can always you know come out with a unique product when it come to food processing uh, ifpt is the best institution and uh, close to them is the pudukode district and uh, the pulse variety is what they cultivate with limited water and it's a completely dry region and even under that circumstances if they produce high quality pulses and with the technologies that is available with ifpt it will be able to really help the farmers to get a better price and also to the consumers the best produce rich in protein and so on next slide so functional delivery systems are also you know we ensure that this is in place training in seed production you know instead of simply cultivating the pulses and uh, getting the crop this one but we train certain farmers for the seed production process itself so when they cultivate and get the seed the margin is very high and uh, especially the fellow farmers really interested in buying the seeds from them rather than from somebody else so that is one advantage and uh, we also link with the government seed certification department since pulses are opv seed companies are reluctant to take up the varieties for commercialization and uh, there are a lot of uncertainties this is the reason the uh, seed producers organizations are very important so farmer producer companies also we were uh, we are promoting and uh, people are able to get especially in virupuram that is uh, that has become a really you know interesting interesting dimension many farmers have you know go in for this kind of uh, work rather than simply cultivate their land with varieties and so on seed storage with three layered bags procurement processing certification redistribution by the farm producer company all the farmers are the members so they know how to really and everyone now have the technical know how of really assorting the material so that they can grade and the high quality they do the lowest quality they know and who will buy what and all those things collective power is there so quality seed distribution to the cultivated area after karif and uh, through agricultural service center in bulapuram this is the kind of a model we will follow and imparted training on seed production to 100 farmers seed production cluster is being formed i told you about the pulse panchayat earlier so the the uh, the cultivator himself is himself or herself is the seed producer as well so the fpo is now established for seed processing unit with the support of sfac next one so these are all the uh, you know seed production by the fpo in tans we really look at earlier when we have to go around even to get 10 kg of seed will become a very difficult one now the varieties like vamban 4 vamban vri2 and all 
farmers are producing in, in terms of tons. So it is easy for us to expand the area of cultivation. Next. So these are all some of the seed producers. You look at their crop, they are very vibrant and they know how to manage when it comes to inputs. So minimal inputs and maximum uh, you know, production. And that too, when it is sold as a seed, they get the best benefit. Next. So value addition and processing, storage and labeling is another very important uh, dimension after the production. And this is where IFP keep, IFPT can also play a very major role. We have uh, installed a mini dal mill so that easily the farmers at their panchayat level itself, they can process it and uh, grade it and keep it for the uh, traders and retailers to come and pick it up. And uh, we have also, you know, handhold them with for a branding and labeling. So the brand name is established. Paticardi is the name. Paticardi Pulse, Pulse products are the name. And uh, really this brand is, you know, very happy to share you that this brand is almost competing with some of the highly established uh, brands in the market, especially in Tamil Nadu. People look for this kind of a brand. And uh, even though it is packed uh, in a, uh, you know, thin bag, but when it comes to picking up the product, people know that this is from a farmer group and they wanted to have it and they look for this particular brand. Value added products such as split dal or ground and oil, etc. That is also in the unveil. Next. Next. Yeah, this is the kind of a facility they have. We have involved all the key stakeholders, the agriculture department of Tamil Nadu, the ESFAC, the local farming community. So they have the um, thrashing yard or uh, drying yard and all these things and behind the build, in the in the building there are um, the dal mill and others are set up so people after immediately after drying they go for a storage and uh, you know batch after batch they process it and grade it and make the product available so these are all some of the products that are available for immediate purchase next groundnut oil here you say and you see the uh, storage facility. It is not just on the floor. It is nicely packed. And even when, it, when the uh, moisture content is high outside, these things are not spoiled. Next. So this is what the valued added product I was talking about, Patikad Dal. This is what you can see the happy face of the producer. And uh, the consumers give a very good, uh, you know, uh, support to this particular product. Next. So these are all when it comes to value added product and so on, the uh, farmers are also get uh, are able to get a uh, high value compared to the semi processed or non processed or completely purchased by a local vendor. Next. So community based organization is also a, is playing a very key role. One, that collective is really helping the farmers to make very good linkages. MSSRF is really a, a facilitator, but when it comes to access to technology or credit or inputs or missionaries, market linkages, and they have to collaborate with the government institution, especially the Department of Agriculture, Horticulture, Marketing, Agriculture, Engineering, Veterinary Department and all. This collective is really helping them to really, uh, you know, uh, speak with confidence and that is really help to get them the necessary funds uh, in, in case if they wanted to expand a missionary or whatever it is, they collectively do this. Next. So you can see the uh, group of uh, women farm producer organization, they have a meeting on how to, what are all the next steps to be taken. And they also visit in groups to the fields and uh, amongst them, they also really reward the best farmer and uh, things like that. In the middle, you can see one bus going for another village, taking the farmers to see the success stories and so on. Next. So the way forward, the uh, great idea of Professor Ramaswami Nathan in setting up the Pulse Panchayat 
stakeholder platforms, promoted the concept of pulse pulse, pulse pulse clusters as platform for multi-stakeholder partnership. You know, I mentioned about the various stakeholders associated with it. Sustainability of the initiative once the farmers realize that seed production and uh, planting the whole land with uh, high quality seeds, triple layered bag. It may be appear as a very small initiative, but it takes us a long way to um, make ensure from harvest to the plate, the quality of the product is maintained. Sustaining the seed system is also very important and upscaling the interventions to reach the economy of scale. This is where the quantum of production is very, very important, even at the village level. That we were able to demonstrate. Next slide. So Pulse Biopark systems and approach, we need to still bring in a lot of innovation, innovative technological innovation, invention from seed to fork by adapting systems approach. It is not just pulse cultivation alone. It is from the, um, you know, the whole 365 days, we need to understand the uh, field, the kind of crops, the various uh, systems that are operationalizing, enabling the best pulse production and also completely you know, merge it with other production system. Preparation of the baseline data on the pulse production is also important. Wherever we are able to get a success story, it is like our Amul model. There are you know, good uh, panchayats which are coming out with uh, high quality production and so on. Immediately, we must be able to also give them the best technologies so that they can reap the benefit in terms of economy and to link all the small holders with both internal and export market to improve their income potential and develop successful value chains. In the case of pulses, it is still it in, in the very early stage. We need to really you know, integrate from the seed production to the market. If we do that, then this is possible, especially for the driest regions of our country. This will be a best model to adapt. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, now we'll be moving ahead with our next technical talk. So for this talk, may I now invite Dr. R. Vitya Lakshmi, ma'am, professor and head DFSQ in Iftam Tanjavur. Ma'am will provide us insights on the FSSA regulations of the pulse processing. We welcome you, ma'am. The session is over to you. Okay, so to continue with the session, we have the session uh, on FACCI regulations for pulses. So from morning onwards, like we have uh, different uh, sessions on the various importance, the processing of uh, pulses. So to market the pulse and the pulse-based uh, products, we need to know the domestic regulations which are in existence in the country. So not only for this, either to import the pulses, uh, we need to uh, know what are the regulations, what are the standards which have been set by the regulatory authority, which is FSACI for India. So this session will be on the regulations and the various standards set by the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India in particular for the category of food, which is pulses, which we are looking into for today. So as we all know, like uh, the Food Safety and the Standards Authority of India, uh, is a regulatory body which is under the Ministry of Health, which has been enacted uh, to formulate standards and to regulate the manufacturing, storage, distribution, import and the sale of food into our country. And this is the authority which will issue the food license to the food business operators for the sake of commercialization. And not only that, they are also into... Uh, capacity building and uh, dissemination of information on uh, uh, food safety and uh, food quality aspects. So earlier, all the orders which were product or commodity wise, like uh, the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act, uh, the milk and milk products, the edible oil, the vegetable oil, or the fruit product. So everything has been now pulled under one umbrella, which is the Food Safety and the Standards Act 2006. And we have the regulation which is called as the Food Safety and Standard Regulations enacted in 2011. And uh, under this regulation, licensing and registration procedures have been set in the FSSA standards for licensing and registration of food business, which provides it to be mandatory for all food business operators in the country 
to be registered or licensed in accordance with the procedures laid down in food safety and standards the licensing and the registration of food business regulation 2011 so it is very mandatory for all food business operators in whatever category of food either they are a processor or they are a manufacturer or a distributor a retailer a repacker a caterer or um, any itinerant vendor so whoever is involved in sale and distribution of food over the uh, food chain needs to be under the license or registration with the fsci so there are two categories i speak upon one is the registration the other one is a license so what is a registration is it is meant for petty food business manufacturers who are into petty retailing they may be a food hawker a itinerant vendor or a temporary stall holder who are into small or cottage scale industry having an annual turnover up to 12 lakhs so whoever is having an annual turnover about 12 lakhs will be under the purview of license and again the license is of two types a state license and a central license so state license is issued for turnover between 12 lakh to 20 crores and a central license need to be obtained for a business turnover above 20 crores some of the other criteria for state and central licensing will include the location of the business the number of retail stores and fbo is having and the other applicable things like uh, which are put forth here in this table uh, so license uh, a central licensing may include dairy units which are having a milk chilling unit uh, with a capacity of 2500 metric tons of milk solids per annum either a vegetable processing uh, unit which has got a solvent extraction and refineries uh, with an installed capacity of 2 metric tons per day or slaughter houses which could uh, process 50 large animals or 150 small animals and meat processing units which could handle uh, 500 kg of meat per day or 150 metric ton per, per annum and all food processing units except those mentioned in this dairy vegetable slaughter and meat processing they include a relabelers repackers having a capacity of 2 metric ton per day except for food grain processes and pulse milling units are also exempted from this and 100% export oriented units need to obtain a central license and all importers importing food items including the food ingredients and additives for commercial use into the country need to have a central license all food business operators who are manufacturing any article of food which contains ingredients or substances using technologies or processes or combination of hereto who safety has been established under these regulation needs to obtain a central license and food business operator operating in more than two states needs to obtain a central license and food catering services whose establishments and units are under central government agencies like uh, railways airway airports uh, sea ports and uh, in defense premises so all they are supposed to obtain a central license so apart from the business turnover these are some of the categories where a central license need to be obtained so coming to the registration of petty food business operators i have told you already like who is called as a petty food business operators so who are having an annual turnover not exceeding 12 lakhs so apart from that uh, in case if they are milk uh, processors uh, so their production unit should have um, maximum of 100 kg per liter per day and uh, in case if they are uh, procuring milk so at least 500 liters of milk per day and if they are having a slaughter slaughtering houses uh, the capacity of slaughtering of two large animals or 10 small birds or 50 poultry birds per day so these are all some of the production capacity of the various food categories into which the petty food business operator falls so they need not obtain a license it is sufficient if they are registered with the fssci so the process for registration is you have two types of forms here form a and form b so form a is for registration and form b is for license so each location suppose the premises is in different locations you have to uh, designate one of the location as the headquarters and each location will be issued with a separate license so except for a transporter a transporter 
can have one valid license which which will, will be issued for all the vehicle of a single transporter and in case if the food business operating is more than two states then he need to obtain one additional central license where he is declaring his one of his premises as the headquarters and uh, generally this license is valid for a period from 1 to 5 years and uh, the process of registering and getting a license is online now so you can simply visit the website of fsci which is a uh, foscos the food safety compliance site here so you can just uh, visit this uh, uh, online portal where all the details required for applying for a registration or the license can be met with so you can also track your application here and the instructions of how to apply what are all the eligibility criteria and what are all these uh, products and their standards so everything can be viewed here there are different tabs here so if you need to apply for a license you can click on this yellow tab if you need to apply for a registration you can click on this red tab uh, in case if you need to modify your license or registration you can go for a green tab so renewal can also be done online so that you have a separate uh, tab for renewal of the license or the registration so some of the documents which are required for registration so before you log into uh, the website you need to keep some of the uh, documents ready for uploading so you need to have a photo a valid government issued photo id such as your aadhar card or your pan card or your voter id and a proof of address of business activity so all these three documents are mandatory for uploading for a registration certificate you just have to just uh, navigate to the portal so and apply for a registration certificate uh, so you need to click on this red tab uh, where you will get a web page requesting for generation of an email id so uh, the uh, otp will be sent to your mobile which is being uh, the number to the number which is being uh, registered or given for registration so after verification of otp you will be taken to this form a where you need to fill in all the requisite details required for registration and submit your application so once you submit your application a registration id will be generated which can be used uh, so in case if after till 30 days you don't get a communication from the fsci or from the authority uh, which may require for an inspection or no you can just use the number which is being generated as your registration id also so similarly for license except the license uh, requires some additional details where you need to uh, declare one of the premises as your head office and uh, the kind of business okay the kind of business is either you are a processor or a manufa manufacturer or a retailer a relabeler distributor so what is your kind of business and what are all the business which you are going to do under that head so all that needs to be filled in additionally so here you will have form b actually and the additional documents required is uh, the layout of the processing unit the list of uh, directors uh, the uh, list of equipments the machineries their uh, installation capacity and uh, the analysis the chemical and the bacteriological analysis report for water which is being used as an ingredient in the food and uh, the production uh, unit photograph and uh, partnership deed or self declaration for proprietary ship and uh, nomination of persons by the company board resolutions so these are all some of the additional documents which needs to be uploaded in case of obtaining the license so this is the fees which has been uh, said by fsci uh, for registration you need to pay a fee of uh, rupees 100 and uh, the for central license uh, a fee of uh, 7500 is need to be paid and different categories in case if you are a manufacturer or a miller so depending on the production capacity so the fees is going to vary so accordingly uh, if you choose your kind of business so accordingly you can pay the fees online and some of the not compliance some of the so far i have told you the do's which should be done so some of the don'ts the non compliance uh, with this provision which a food business operator will be attracted penalty which should not be done by an fpo is failure to comply with the directions of fsci running a business without a registration or without a license so providing a substandard food 
misbranding of the food, providing uh, unsafe food which is deteriorated in quality, selling food which is not of the nature or which is not of the substance or as which is not in accordance with the FACC standards, any unhygienic or unsanitary manufacturing process of food, presence of extraneous matter in food, misleading advertisement, some controversies, or uh, in case if uh, the FBO is possessing an adulterant or providing false information regarding the food. So all this will attract uh, penalization and the FBO can be charged for such non-compliance with the act. So your registration or the license number uh, will be a 14 digit uh, number. So the first digit will either denote your registration or license. The next two digits will de uh, denote your state code and the third, I mean the fourth and the fifth digit will rec uh, denote the year of enrollment of the business. And the next three digits will denote the quantity of the enrolling master and the last six digit will be your permit number. So not necessarily that you should use only the last six digits, but all the 14 digits needs to be printed. Either if it is a license, it should be printed as FSSL followed by the 14 digit number. If it is going to be a registration, it should be FSSR followed by the 14 digit number. So it is mandatory that you print all the 14 digits on the label of your food package. So this is a very mandatory requirement. So coming to our today's subject, which is pulses. So we can just look upon certain uh, standards laid down by FSSAI for pulses. So there are uh, different regulations in uh, food safety and standards. So you have the license and registrationing. So where all these information, like how I told you, like uh, what are the procedures for registration? What are the procedures for licensing? And what are some of the good manufacturing practices which needs to be uh, followed in a premises by the food business operator. So everything has been laid out in Schedule 4 in the licensing and the registration of food business. Likewise, the quality and safety standards have been set in the Food Product Standards and Food Additives Act and the contaminants, toxins and residues. And the packaging uh, regulation will give you a guidance on which the packaging of the pulses or the commodity should be and how it should be labeled and displayed is given in the labeling and the display regulations and what all need not be done or the prohibition and the restriction of sales is given in the regulation on prohibition and restriction of sales 2011. So apart from the normal product standards, you have some specialized products like proprietary foods, functional foods, uh, nutraceutical health supplements, which has got a separate regulation a regulation for importing food into the country. And uh, suppose there are some non-specific food or food ingredients. So uh, that is falling under this regulation and a regulation for organic food, regulation for alcoholic beverages and regulation for food fortification. These are, though there are many regulations, these are some of the important regulations which an FBO uh, must know. So coming to pulses. Uh, so pulses is... Uh, uh, coming under the category of a cereals and cereal products, which is under the regulation 2.4. So under 2.4 cereals and cereal products, we have food grains under which pulses comes. So food grains means anything intended for human consumption, which may be either whole or it may be broken kernels of either cereals or millets or pulses. So in addition to the uh, under mentioned standards where we'll be looking in the next slides. So the food grain should confirm that they will be free from any admixtural grains like argimon, mexicana or kesari. So these are all some of the wheat seeds which are present uh, in the food grain production. They shall be free from any added coloring matter and the food grain shall not contain any insecticide residues. Uh, other than those specified in the regulation on contaminants, toxins and residues. And also, uh, they shall be free from any uh, residues for pesticides, for uh, insecticides and for any other uh, contaminants and toxins like mycotoxins and so on. So the food grains uh, which are used for grinding, like you have, you're going to make a flour out of this. 
so anything which is further processed shall be clean it should be free from any impurities it should not contain any foreign matter or any extraneous matter so some of the pulses which are uh, under the purview of the regulation includes your masur masur dal uh, urd hole and moong dal hole channa hole the split pulse of uh, uh, masur moong and your urd then you have dal channa and you have split pulse masur so these are the category of pulses and their products which are covered under the regulation so all these grains should be clean sound sweet wholesome and free from any admixtures so coming to these quality standards moisture of the grains should not be more than 14% by weight and the foreign matter should not be more than 1% by weight of which 0.25% uh, can be mineral matter and maximum of 0.1% of impurities of animal origin and um, other edible grains like mixture of other edible grains say for example urd in masoor or uh, uh, moong dal in your uh, split urd so whatever the admixtures of grains not more than 3% by weight for masoor not more than 4% uh, for moong and urd dal and 0.5% uh, by weight for this uh, split uh, split pulse and likewise maximum you can have up to 4% and damaged grains not more than 5% by weight and um, weevilled grains not more than 6% by count for uh, the whole grains and not more than 3% by count for the split grains and uric acid so uric acid is a determinant of the any insect or uh, any uh, pest infestation so uric acid not more than 100 mg per kg and aflatoxin in case there are any fungal infestation upon storage or any uh, field spoilage by fungi so whatever it is the aflatoxin not more than 30 micrograms per kg and uh, provided that uh, the total foreign matter other edible grains and damaged grains shall not exceed the percentages like 8% 9% and 9% for whole grains of masoor urd and moong and generally 8% for the uh, split pulses and uh, around 7% for a uh, for the split uh, pulse masoor and so on so these are the quality standards so while uh, trading uh, the pulse these quality standards need to be followed apart from this we can uh, the coming to the food additives so these food additives are nothing but uh, preservatives which can be uh, used to maintain the shelf life and the quality of the pulses so for all the pulses dals either they are whole or split so any type of acidifying agents which have been mentioned here in the regulation like your acetic acid citric acid lactic acid tartaric or malic acid can be added in good manufacturing practices and uh, some antioxidants like ascorbic acid or bha can be added up to 200 ppm maximum and uh, firming agents uh, this is generally for um, any type of the pulse products so firming agents like uh, calcium chloride or cal calcium lactate or gluconate up to 350 ppm can be added and thickening agents like uh, arabic gum uh, uh, kappa carrageen gourd gum so all these can be added up to 10 g per kg maximum so coming to the labeling requirements uh, there are certain uh, mandatory information which needs to be uh, added in the label of the package so first is the name of the product the list of ingredient so in case if it is just a whole pulse then not necessarily it should be listed so the name of the product can be given as such and nutritional labeling like uh, what is the moisture protein fat fiber energy uh, requirement uh, for 100 g of the product should be mentioned as a nutritional labeling in case if had if it has got some health claims like our nutritional claims we can say like it is protein rich then your uh, proximal or the nutritional labeling should reflect on the uh, health or the nutritional claim which is being laid down on the uh, label and declaration regarding the food allergen 
like there are a list of allergens which are added in case if the pulse product has got uh, any one of the allergen it should be mentioned on a label it's a mandatory requirement and the symbol for vegetarian and non vegetarian uh, so generally this is going to be a vegetarian product and um, in case if the pulse pulse is uh, pulse product is being fortified then the symbol for fortification the f plus symbol for fortification along with the slogan that the product is fortified it is called as sampurna potion swasth jeevan so this should be along with this uh, fortification symbol this uh, slogan should also be printed on the label in case if the pulse is produced organically then you should this is the symbol for organic food along with the uh, phrase jaivik bharat so this should be printed on the label in case if the pulse is processed or dried or subject to irradiation for its uh, quality and shelf life then this labeling this certification should be marked on the label uh, when is the date of irradiation what is the license number given for irradiation and for what purpose that food commodity is being irradiated and for pulses the minimum uh, irradiation which it can be subject to is 0.25 kg units to a maximum of 1 kg units so on an average for any type of pulse commodity a 0.62 kg units of irradiation can be applied and as mentioned uh, any preservatives or food additives as permitted by the regulation can be used to enhance the uh, shelf life of the commodity and uh, i hope for pulse you will not have any warning or declaration so if at all your commodity needs to come with a warning or a declaration then that should be printed on the label the manufacturer's address the net quantity of the uh, commodity the batch or the lot number the date of manufacturing or the date of packaging the best before date the country of origin or the country of import and the directions for usage and uh, all these are some of the mandatory information to be provided on the label so this is one example of uh, labeling so i have a commodity here uh, where uh, you can see the nutritional information so the vegetarian symbol the ingredients which are listed here so this is an allergen statement so this product contains nuts so this is an allergen declaration the manufacturing address so this is the symbol of uh, discarding the package after usage so i have uh, the net quantity so directions for storage upon opening the fsc license number and uh, best before uh, date and the manufacturing number uh, uh, the lot number the manufacturing date so all this can be barcoded also so this is how this is the mandatory informations uh, the basic informations to be provided on the label so all these uh, products ca uh, can be tested for uh, their quality standards and safety standards in our food testing lab also we are in abl accredited and fsci referral as well so this is the information which is available on the website of uh, iifpt on niftum tanjavur uh, the testing charges and the parameters are mentioned there on so beneficiaries can benefit out of our testing facilities as well so thank you so much so this is all about the fsci standards and regulations on pulses Thank so you. now uh, we'll be moving ahead with our next technical talk, which is on packaging and machineries for the pulse processing. For this session, may I now invite Dr. S. Anand Kumar, sir. We welcome you, sir. The session is over to you. Dear participants, uh, this lecture we are going to cover on uh, the packaging standards for pulses and uh, what are the packaging machineries which can be used for uh, pulses and pulse-based uh, value-added products. And apart from that, under this PMFME scheme, what are the equipments we can purchase? How we can set up a small uh, pulse processing unit, or when we make any value-added products, or uh, what are the uh, setup we can make it under this PMFME scheme? That also we can give some uh, lights on it. So here, when we talk about the pulses, 
uh, it is a edible seed from the uh, pod uh, variety which is leguminous uh, if you take india we are producing almost uh, uh, 24 to 27 uh, uh, million metric tons of the pulses even if you see the consumption pattern of the pulses it is increasing when we compare with 2017 now uh, almost per capita consumption it is increasing about 21 grams per day per uh, per head so which means the demand uh, for the pulses also it is getting increases and also if you see in the market there are many uh, value added products are uh, comes from the, the pulses because the pulse it uh, it doesn't uh, not only provide the uh, the, the protein for example 20 to 40 percentage of the protein which is available apart from that there are many micronutrients if you see that uh, uh, folate or uh, that is zinc uh, even if you take uh, the micronutrients uh, for example uh, potassium all these things which is available so in such a case uh, uh, the pulse can be a, 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 a balanced uh, diet for all kinds of uh, peoples and even if you see the the global uh, production rate okay canadian will be the the largest producer of uh, the pulses in the globe uh, if you take in india <clears throat> we are uh, in the global production we are having 27 percentage of area for the pulses uh, so in such a case even we can have uh, uh, a major competitive in the global productions also so in such a case when we come to the packaging because uh, normally if you take the pulses uh, we can classify into two categories one is as it is a whole grain we can um, uh, we can consider and another one is uh, we can convert it into some value added product so this value added product it can be uh, uh, the pulse flour or you can make some mixture of uh, food grains for example if you take that uh, bengal gram or that bajji mix or whatever it may be so it can be some value added product otherwise you can make some extruded products or some biscuit or cookies so in such a case when we take as a whole grain so this pulse uh, which will have that moisture content uh, lesser than 12 percent so it can be stored in the normal atmosphere uh, even for one year also uh, because uh, uh, the uh, moisture content safe moisture content for the pulses it can be varied from uh, 10 to uh, 12 percentage or in some cases it will be varying from 12 to 14 percentage so under this case uh, it can be stored in the normal uh, storage conditions for longer period but when we go for uh, lower the moisture content so sometimes what will happen that uh, the lipid oxidation also which will be taking place so we can't go very low uh, uh, moisture content for the storage and similarly we have to uh, play with the, the critical moisture content where it can be stored for longer and when we come to the uh, the, the value added products so when we are uh, when we are changing the, the structure of the pulses or when we are going for uh, milling or when we are going for value added product when we make so that time there are more challenges on the shelf life of the commodity for example so you can keep the soya bean uh, uh, for a longer period but once you make uh, uh, some tofu or some of that uh, soya uh, soya bean based beverages something you are making so the life of this tofu and if you see that uh, soya bean beverages that will be very very less it can be fermented very quickly otherwise if you make a tofu until otherwise if you have uh, something like a blister packaging or proper uh, uh, refrigerated condition it cannot be stored so in such a case we can think uh, we can discuss both the thing uh, for the for the, the the raw pulses what kind of packaging method or a storage condition can be followed or is when we go for uh, processing what kind of things can be followed so whenever we take <clears throat> the pulses uh, uh, when we go for that uh, packaging so normally our packaging material will follow the different uh, will uh, follow different functions particularly this uh, containment uh, convenience protections and as well as that communications so in such a case the selection of the packaging material for particular commodity and a particular purpose which will be very so that we can see here when we talk about that uh, packaging challenges from the farm to the pork 
because there are many players are involved in the processing line for example if you take the farmers they are also involving in the harvesting stage when we take that uh, distributors or retailers so they are also having major role in the preserving the food items and when we uh, when it is coming to the table that the consumers they have uh, their uh, particular type of vision and perceptions particularly when they are selecting the food items so in such a case Uh, the, the selection of the packaging material it has to uh, satisfy the, the producers it has to satisfy the retailers and also it has to satisfy the consumers so in such a case uh, there will be a uh, there will be a question mark so what kind of packaging material can be uh, yeah, can be appropriate one at the farm level what is the packaging material can be appropriate for the processed food items so that will have always some confusion for the uh, the the producers as well as for the end users so in such a case whenever you select a particular packaging material you have to uh, focus on the the purpose of that packaging and what are the the critical factors that will affect the quality of the uh, product under this particular uh, conditions so that we have to uh, check it out for examples if you take that at the level of farm level so the 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 collection of that uh, the harvested grains or the pulses will be higher and the storage capacity will be higher and also that uh, uh, the environmental factors which will be affecting this type of harvested grains so particularly even if you take that uh, temperature relative humidity that uh, uh, even if you say that uh, available moisture content of that grains so uh, that uh, biotic abiotic factors so that will causes the major spoilage in the and when it comes to the <clears throat> retailers so the retailers they will collect uh, the the, uh, the the harvested grain from the farmers and they will convert uh, this uh, the harvested bulk grains into different kinds of packaging uh, uh, mode for example so 25 kg or 50 kg or 100 kg bags then they will uh, sell it to the the processing line so there the processing line they will convert that food grains into as per the consumer demands they will convert this product into different packaging sizes so in such a case when the products are uh, doesn't have any uh, different unit operations that time the safety wise will be easy but whenever we are making in different uh, and the product undergoes different unit operations whenever it is going to different value addition so that time the risk also, risk factors also which should be higher so here if you take that uh, failure indices for that uh, pulses so particularly uh, we are categorizing one is that uh, biotic factors and another one is that yeah biotic factors so this biotic factors which will include particularly that uh, microorganisms insects uh, rodents all these things will be considered as a biotic factors and when we talk about that yeah biotic factors that is storage temperature that is storage uh, humidity and uh, as well as that is storage that uh, what we can say the light which is available in the storage grounds all these things which will comes under that a biotic factors and apart from that you can see that uh, the physical uh, uh, factors that also which will be causing the uh, spoilage to the the pulses so in such a case Uh, that that materials are that vibrations or mechanical damages which will be taking in different handling conditions even if you take that physiological factors something like uh, respiration characteristics or as eating of the grains okay controlling the humidity all these things which will be highly relevant to the physiological changes so in such a case controlling these factors definitely which will safeguard your uh, uh, pulses uh, in the storage grounds and as well as uh, when you keep it in the retail shops also so that will be uh, safeguard your food grains and another thing if you see that uh, biological factors as i told you that uh, microorganisms or insects and uh, that rodents so particularly that microorganisms uh, either it can be a uh, that soil borne microorganism or with that air borne microorganism so these microorganisms when we take that uh, value added product for example Uh, this value added products we can uh, make it out like a self stable product highly perishable and perishable commodity so if you take considering that uh, uh, you are making some product from the soya bean like uh, tofu so this product which will be called as a uh, highly uh, 
susceptible to the microorganism and it can be easily affected by the microorganism. So in such a case, for example, if you take that microorganism, supramonas, that microcochlea or lactobacillus or bacillus-based microorganism, so that can be easily affected by this uh, highly perishable commodity. So in such a case, uh, that uh, targeted microorganism or controlling this microorganism, so that is also very much important when you go for selecting the proper processing method and uh, packaging materials. And another thing is, if you see that uh, uh, the the uh, the type of environment where you are storing that food grains. So that is also very much important. So there it can be depending on the that microorganisms available in that particular area and also that, uh, uh, for example, that is soil bone based uh, microorganism. Otherwise, if you see that uh, the storage conditions or the mitre contents which is uh, taking place in the particular uh, uh, storage environment. So all these things which has to be highly relevant to the spoilage factors, particularly for the pulses. So here when we come to the uh, packaging material, particularly for the uh, pulses, so here the packaging materials, either it can be a flexible packaging material or it can be a rigid packaging material. So here if you take that flexible packaging material, we are having a plant-based fiber bags, otherwise it can be a plastic fiber bags. So this uh, plant-based fiber bags, which consists of that jute or cotton, scissors, okay, otherwise even if you take that cellulose-based material, which can be derived from the uh, plants, so that will be considered. Otherwise, if you take that plastic bags, so either it can be a, a woven bags, otherwise uh, that mixed uh, uh, fabric material, uh, either it can be a, a, a PP worn bags, otherwise, uh, even, even if you take uh, laminated pouches, so all these things which can be uh, comes under this uh, plastic based uh, bags. So, in this case, uh, the selection of these packaging materials also depending on the capacity of that product, what you are going to pack it. For examples, if you take a, a bulk packaging systems, so sometimes they will go for a plant fiber based packaging material. So, example that gunny bags are highly uh, uh, used. So, even if you see that gunny bags, it has some of the advantages and limitations. So, uh, to avoid that, they are using it uh, uh, that uh, uh, PP woven bags, particularly for this uh, the pulses. And this uh, PP worn bags also it has some of the advantages and limitations. For example, it can be easily affected by the ultraviolet uh, rays. And also, even if you see the, 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 the permeations of this packaging materials, which will be higher. And in some cases, uh, if you see that advantages that PP worn bags, it is lesser in weight when compared to the jute bag. So in such a case that the empty bags, which will be uh, used for the packing purpose, it will occupy um, uh, the lesser weight so that uh, during that handling and transportation, which will not give any adults to that uh, handlers and as well as that uh, transportation, it will not be the dead, light, dead weight will not be considered. Here, when we come to the retail packaging, uh, we have uh, different kinds of packaging like primary, secondary and transit packaging. So this packaging material selections also, which will be varying uh, depending upon the, the kinds of product and the nature of the product, because sometimes we will pack the whole grains, otherwise we will pack that processed product. For example, that uh, false flour, otherwise that uh, uh, extruder product, something like that when we make it. So the selection of the primary and the secondary packaging material also, which will be varying. So when we say that primary packaging material, which will have that direct contact with the food items. And the secondary packaging material, so normally for this pulse-based products, we are using uh, corrugated uh, fiberboard boxes. Otherwise, they, in simple, they will call it uh, CFB boxes. And apart from that, for transit packaging, for bulk packaging, so either it can be uh, through shipment, uh, through the ship or that air cargoes, we are uh, we are exporting these pulse-based products. So in such a case, that uh, cotton boxes service, that metal containers are highly used for this uh, transit packaging. So here, when we come to the uh, bulk packaging of the pulses, so first uh, uh, we can a uh, simple uh, packaging material which can be used in the bulk packaging, which will be that uh, gunny bags. So otherwise, it will be called as a jute bag. So this uh, jute bags, it is having uh, uh, the advantages uh, particularly, uh, uh, it is most widely used, and also if you see that it has the good resistance, uh, particularly 
for uh, different storage capacity and also if you see uh, it has very good uh, toughness and also the tearing uh, strength of these uh, gunny bags are very high it will not be easily uh, teared and also uh, if you see the protection from the sunlight because normally uh, the food grains it should be stored in that uh, shaded area so in such a case it will give uh, it can be protect from the sunlight so that uh, what we can say that uh, the the heat accumulations uh, these things it can be uh, minimized and also if you see the limitations particularly when you use that uh, gunny bags so the weight of the gunny bags it will be higher and also when we use that flowers uh, and also that pulse, uh, pulses sometimes that insects it can be easily penetrate into the gunny bags and uh, uh, it can be creating the that is spoilage particularly if you see that grain borer so it can be easily pass through that gunny bags and also it can be creating the, the holes on that uh, 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 grains either it can be an internal borer or external uh, feeder so in such a case uh, this is the problem we are facing in the gunny bag and apart from that if you see uh, uh, the moisture absorption so the gunny bags it can be easily uh, absorb that moisture so in such a case what we uh, during the storage period the fungal growth also can be taking place uh, when there is a high humidity regions or that moisture absorption is more in the gunny bag so nowadays to overcome these things uh, that liner based gunny bags are highly used so what we can say this uh, outer layer will be that uh, gunny bag and inner it can be a, a ldp uh, liner bags uh, which can be uh, 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 merged or it can be added into the uh, gunny bags so that what uh, it can be supportive that moisture migration can be uh, uh, minimized so that your food grains which will not absorb that moisture and during the storage period so it cannot it it, it will not uh, uh, causes any fungal growth or mites or any other biological changes can be taking place so that is the one advantage and apart from that uh, we are having that pp worn bags and these pp worn bags are available uh, starting from uh, 10 kg to 25 kg bags are available and this uh, pp worn bags uh, fabrics material either it can be a plant fiber or otherwise uh, that plastic fiber it can be merged together for the production of that pp worn bags and also if you see that uh, advantages of this Uh, pp worn bags it is having a moisture uh, proof and also rot proof even nowadays if you see that pp worn bags are uh, having a coating with some of the repellents and also if you see uh, um, uh, that essential oil coated uh, pp worn bags are uh, coming in the market and this type of bags which will have advantages like active packaging that can create Uh, some modified atmosphere uh, packaging conditions and apart from that uh, the, the the essential oil vaporize from the uh, pp worn bags so that will avoid that uh, insects or mites that can be entered into the packaging material so that is the advantages apart from that that polyethylene bags so that is also highly uh, used in the the bulk packaging of that uh, pulses because that pulses that the moisture content of the pulses will be uh, in a low state and also if you see that water activity that is also very very less point uh, we can say 0.13 to 0.25 so in such a case uh, this type of product which will be hygroscopic in nature which will uh, ready to absorb that moisture so in such a case when we pack this type of uh, pulse based product in uh, uh, polyethylene bags uh, so that uh, that can be uh, supporting the extension of that life because this polyethylene uh, bags will have higher barrier to the moisture so in such a case uh, that will support the dried uh, food grains particularly in the packing systems and apart from that when we go for uh, the retail packaging in a bigger size for example uh, 20 kg or 25 kg bags so in such a case uh, that multi layer or that laminated pouches are highly used particularly if you see that ldp or lltp films are uh, highly used in the bulk packaging of that uh, food grains as well as in the pulses even if you see that bioxily oriented polypropylene along with the polypropylene layers so that is also mainly used and uh, also if you see that laminated in the combination of bopp with the ldp or is uh, cast polypropylene cpp uh, with the ldp or is that polyester polyethylene terephthalate with the ldp so this type of uh, combination also it is used in the bulk packaging of 
that uh, food grains and pulses and these things are mainly depending on that uh, number of days of that storage and uh, depending upon the storage conditions and uh, based on that humidity uh, humidity availability in the storage environment so based on that we can we can increase the thickness of that pouches and as well as we can increase the barrier properties of the pouches for uh, storing them of this uh, pulse uh, uh, pulse grain and another thing when we talk about the the bulk packaging so this is the equipment which is used for uh, filling the uh, pulses into the uh, gunny bags or ways in the uh, pp wound bags so this is called uh, bag filling machines so even you can see the bag filling machines are available uh, which can be suitable for packing of uh, 25 kg to 50 kg of bags or ways even if you take this silo type of bags for example 100 kg or 200 kg bags so that also you can uh, fill it and mainly that can be filled on the weight basis and after filling the required quantity in the pouches or the uh, the bags so here the filling can be done by that uh, uh, gravitational force and after filling uh, the uh, filled bags can, which will be stretched by using that uh, stretching machine and it can be moved through the conveyors for the the storage good so this type of machines cost which can be varying from 3.5 lakhs to 7 lakhs uh, 7 lakhs rupees so in such a case uh, according to the number of tubes uh, so you can make it out uh, the number of filling session also and this is the equipment mainly used in the bulk packaging of that pulses and another thing when we uh, uh, when we fill the grains and when we store the pulses in the particularly in the, the storage yard so there are many factors which will affect the the quality of pulses so in such a case uh, particularly if you see that uh, the types of the the insects that can be affect that uh, uh, quality of that pulses so in such a case either it can be internal borer or external uh, feeder otherwise if you see that uh, the value added product something like if you make it a false flower so in such a case uh, that red flower beetle or with that uh, stegobium pensilium lysoderm sergonia so these are all the insects are ma- uh, mainly uh, uh, creating the post harvest losses particularly in the storage group so in such a case there are different storage structures are used for uh, for uh, for uh, for minimizing this type of the losses so in such a case as a as a uh, good uh, storage uh, very good uh, uh, storage man- uh, if you see that uh, management of that uh, the storage good ones so one thing you have to consider uh, the uh, the time of storage how long you want to store it and also that uh, you have to monitor that uh, storage temperature as well as the relative humidity and the moisture content of the food grain so these three things you have to mainly monitor uh, during that uh, uh, proper uh, manage uh, proper uh, storage management protocols you have to follow to avoid this type of uh, insects damages during that uh, storage period and apart from that if you see that uh, available oxygen and uh, light uh, that also will affect the quality of that uh, uh, the pulses because uh, the pulses uh, which contains uh, the lipid uh, uh, lipids so that can be easily oxidized during that uh, storage period so controlling that oxygen level for examples uh, nowadays even if you see that modified atmosphere packagings are coming in the market so this controlling that oxygen level and uh, keeping the product in the shaded area definitely that will support you uh, to extend the uh, life of the product so in such a case i am not going very deep in the storage very uh, in the common practices what we are using for the pulses for controlling this type of the insects either the the uh, pulses can be stored in the bags otherwise it can be stored in the outer outdoor unit either it can be in the cover and plinth method otherwise that bunker type of storage structures it can be used apart from that we are using that warehouse uh, otherwise uh, that uh, covered goodons we are using it and uh, uh, even if you see that uh, low capacity silos the yeah, metal silos are used uh, even uh, the flexible bags are used in the uh, silo structures so in such a case Uh, according to the the capacity that uh, the production level and uh, as well as that marketing uh, value so that uh, the retailers they can select a particular type of uh, storage uh, method uh, which can be feasible for them in terms of economically in terms of safety wise 
so that can be easily uh, uh, adapted in the uh, any uh, warehouse or service uh, pulse storage structures and also when we talk about this type of insights there are different fumigation methods are used in the uh, uh, in the storage godowns yeah, particularly if you see in india this aluminum phosphate that phosphin based uh, phosphin gas based fumigations are highly used and this also uh, having different techniques they are using it uh, either it can be a tarpaulin or cover fumigation or empty space fumigation container in the metal containers they can add the grains and they can fumigate it uh, either by uh, eco film that uh, using that carbon dioxide or even if you see that high pressurized uh, carbon dioxide even if you take that ozone gas so like that uh, in a container based fumigation also they are using and apart from that that uh, vertical storage or bunk, uh, bunker fumigation tobacco fumigations okay bar of fumigations or on farm uh, storage fumigations so like that different fumigation uh, structures or methods are using it uh, for controlling this type of insects in the uh, pulse storage area so in such a case uh, just i am taking the examples uh, this aluminum phosphide has been used uh, 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 in in majority cases so in such a case uh, that 3 gram of aluminum phosphide tablets that can release 1 gram of uh, phosphin and uh, the usage of that uh, aluminum phosphide also very easily and the penetration power also which will be very easy and uh, the migration of this phosphin gases into the food grains also very very less so in such a case a proper uh, proper uh, monitoring of that gas levels and also proper application methods that will be uh, uh, support you particularly for the, the pulse uh, growers and as well as that uh, packers so that will not produce higher residues also and also if you see uh, instead of using that uh, uh, fumigants nowadays this hermetic bags are coming into the market for packaging of that uh, food grains as well as in the pulses so here i am taking one of the example which we worked on it that is uh, uh, evol bag ethylene vinyl alcoholic bag so in this case uh, this ethylene vinyl alcohol it is a plastic film it has the uh, unique features uh, which is having a very low oxygen permeability value for example uh, this evoh film it is having that permeability less than 20 cc per meter square per day so in such a case Uh, normal plastic films that uh, oxygen barrier will be higher uh, oxygen transmission rate will be higher but if you take this uh, evol bags along with the polyethylene plastic film so when you make such a film which will have higher moisture barrier and as well as that higher oxygen barrier uh, properties so in such a case even if you take uh, the uh, pulses for the seed purpose or even if you take that raw pulses after processing if you want to store it so without fumigation also you can use this type of hermetic bags so that will control that insects growth during the uh, storage period so this is the work what we did for the pulses so we have taken that turdal and chickpea and apart from that we have taken other grains uh, grains like uh, wheat and uh, basmati rice also when we conduct this hermetic bag uh, storage studies for six month period we observed that uh, insect infestations are very very less and even we can say in some of the pouches zero percentage there is no insect because the oxygen level when we monitor the inside that pouches so particularly if you take that paddy it is coming uh, even that co2 level it is increasing to 12 to 15 percentage even when we take this type of pulses so in the lower level of oxygen uh, even that uh, insects even from one stage to another stage for example egg stage to larva larva to pupa or pupa to adult that uh, stage transmission also uh, it is very very less when we go for this type of hermetic bags so in such a case uh, whenever we feel uh, usage of chemicals will be uh, some constraints so that time you can go for this type of hermetic bags also so until always without any damages to this bag you can uh, reuse or recycle these bags for many times and when we come to the retail uh, packaging so here uh, we are having different kinds of uh, packaging either uh, the uh, individual pouches can be filled and it can be sealed with the uh, uh, induction sealing machine or wise by using that band sealers these pouches can be uh, sealed so normally that hdp or pp covers are used uh, because pp covers which will have more transparency always it can be a cpp crystalline polypropylene along with the hdp pouches are used for packing of the pulses 
even sometimes you can see that craft paper along with a liner of hdp or ldp films so these things are used for particularly for the packaging of pulses in the retail shops varying from 500 grams to 1 kg 2 kg pouches and uh, another thing cotton bags are used uh, so instead of gunny bags this cotton bags are also used so this capacity of that cotton um, bags are uh, varying from 5 kg to 10 kg and uh, these things are uh, mainly used to for uh, uh, the, the in the retail shop and considering that uh, jute bags that uh, weight of the material will be less but if you see that cost of that uh, that cotton bags it will be little bit higher the only disadvantage is sometimes if it is absorbing that moisture so that will cause us uh, uh, that fungal growth and uh, another packaging material which will be used for uh, that pulses which will be the paper bags so uh, this paper bags it is it will be environmental friendly particularly the craft papers uh, either it can be a sulfide papers or is that chemically treated pulp papers bags are highly used for the packaging of that uh, uh, pulses even if you take Uh, sometimes the parchment paper or wax paper this type this kinds of papers are also used for that uh, value added product of uh, that uh, uh, what we can say that uh, pulse based uh, products uh, something like if when you make the the uh, the cookies or bakery products so that is uh, used highly in the packaging line and apart from that uh, we are using bioaxially oriented polypropylene so normally this polypropylene in both the uh, uh, axial directions that can be stretched and uh, when you make it more stretched so that will be called as a bioaxially uh, oriented polypropylene bags and which will have more clarity and also which will have higher uh, that uh, tensile strength so in such a case uh, uh, the carrying load carrying capacity which will be higher and this type of bags also used in the uh, packaging of pulses otherwise you can see that a coated recycled paper board okay they will simply they will call it as a crp boxes so in such a case this paper based material which will be coated with either resin material otherwise it can be coated with the polyethylene material uh, along with some adhesive material like a starch based material or latex based material so in such a case this uh, coated recycled papers also used in the packaging of uh, that pulse based products so in such a case when we take some value added uh, products so either it can be a, the confectionery product or bakery product or is even if you see that uh, uh, morning our murgan sir explain about different kinds of puppets and the demands of puppet so in such a case these puppets are di- there are different kinds of value added products it is available so in such a case when we come for this value added product that common packaging materials used in this type of products are mainly that a plastic glass bottle metal containers and uh, corrugated boxes so here uh, when we select the particular packaging material for uh, particular uh, product so first thing we have to consider the life of the product how long you want to extend it either the product uh, shelf life you want it for one month or six month or one year so based on that the packaging material will be selected and another thing if you see the cost of the packaging material okay so how much the the manufacturer they can invest on the packaging material so that material cost will be uh, uh, another thing and also if you see that uh, the interaction between the packaging material and the food items so during the uh, storage period there should not be any migration there should not be any chemical reaction it has to be taking place that will causes that quality changes so in such a case these three parameters it has to be highly considered when we go for selecting the Uh, proper packaging material for the food items and uh, here when we see that uh, uh, the value added product either it can be a uh, uh, the 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 sec- uh, secondary processed pulses or is even if you take um, the pulse based product something if you make so the major equipment which will be used in the industry which will be called as a uh, uh, form fill sealing machines so this form fill sealing machine it is available in uh, two ways one is for the uh, powdered material and another one is for the, the 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 flaked or grind material even if you see nowadays that uh, form fill sealing machine it is available like a vibratory form fill sealing machine so that single machine it can be supportive for powdered material or it can be supportive for the flakes based material also and this type of packaging material uh, machineries it is varying from 3.5 lakhs to 7 lakhs so this if you have multiple channels that cost of the equipments for example if you are 
filling with uh, multiple channels for example grind with uh, uh, gases for example creating a modified atmosphere so that time the cost of the equipment which will be higher otherwise if you use it for single purpose so in such a case this uh, form fill sealing machines are highly used even if you see uh, when you make some uh, extruded product some cold extruded product uh, which can be produced from the pulses so even if you make some poppard so at that time uh, instead of uh, vertical form fill sealing machine that horizontal form fill sealing machines are used so that can wrap seal the um, um, product so this type of products which can minimize that uh, uh, labor requirement and it can be uniformly packed and the capacity of that filling also uh, will be packing also will be higher because per minute you can pack some 10 to 12 or 10 to 15 even some of the equipments it is available per minute 40 packets can be packed so that type of higher end equipments also which is available so under this pm fm scheme so if you are a pulse um, retailers or uh, pulse uh, manufacturers so in such a case this type of equipments to make it own branding it can be easily support you and another thing, uh, whenever uh, we are making some value added product, so this uh, modified atmosphere packaging, which will be highly used, particularly if you say uh, the fried uh, uh, pulse based, uh, uh, any spice based, uh, uh, any peppers or uh, fried items, anything you want to make it. So, in such a case, this products which will be packed in a modified atmosphere condition. So, this is the, the vertical form fill. Uh, modified atmosphere packaging machine particularly for the fried items they can use that uh, nitrogen gas otherwise if you are using that um, raw pulses you want to pack it so that time you can use that uh, carbon dioxide so by using this uh, adding this type of gases either you can control that oxidation or you can control that biochemical changes or you can control that in insects growth uh, during that uh, storage period and apart from that uh, there are other uh, machineries, uh, filling and sealing machineries also highly used in the uh, um, pulse uh, packaging. One is called uh, that uh, band sealer. So this band sealer, either sometimes you can have that uh, stand-up pouches, or else you can have uh, that um, individual flexible packaging film can be uh, packed by the uh, uh, by the labor and it can be pa continuously packed with the band sealer. So normally this band sealer also Nowadays, which is available with uh, different sealing heads, uh, that uh, the sealing height and as well as that sealing width, it can be varying uh, depending upon the, uh, the usage and uh, the level of packing also. And also, if you see that uh, the band sealer, nowadays it is coming along with the nitrogen flushing unit also. So sometimes if you are not uh, invest for that uh, form fill sealing machine. So you can buy this band sealer along with the nitrogen flushing unit. So that cost of the equipment will be uh, about 45,000 rupees. And similarly, that nitrogen flushing equipments for the form fill sealing machine with the different sales also available. So this can be used for making some um, value added product or fried items you can pack. Another thing uh, yes, which will sir. be used. Yes, ma'am. Sir, can we please make it a little bit fast? Yes, yes, yes fine. Okay. Another thing is vacuum packaging machine. So in this vacuum packaging machine, this vertical uh, vacuum packaging machines particularly used for making a, a cake type of uh, the food grains packaging, particularly for the pulses. So here what will happen when you pack this type of vacuum packaging, one is uh, we can control the uh, insides growth and apart from that, what will happen that volume requirement for the pulses. So that also it can be minimized. And when, whenever you go for this vacuum packaging machine, when, when you select this um, uh, LDP pouches or that uh, polyamide nylon based pouches, so that will have more shrinkable value and also that will support you to extend the life of the product. And another thing, as I told you, that extruder product or fucked product, so that can be made by this type of um, uh, pulse based product. So, in such a case, to maintain the crispiness of the product, and also to avoid that uh, fat oxidation, so you have to select that metalized pouches. So where the uh, film which will have less uh, less 
permeation for the gases and it has to withstand the nitrogen gases and also that uh, water activity of the product. So here if you see that for little snacks which will have that water activity 0.36 to 0.43, so that has to be maintained. So whenever it is increasing, so automatically what will happen, the crispiness value which will go down and also that uh, other biochemical changes which will be taking place. So these metallized pouches, otherwise if you see that thermoformed cups, so that is also used in the snacks food items which can be made by the pulses. And apart from that, the, um, uh, any other uh, value-added products, when you select, uh, particularly for the snacks food, which can be developed from the pulses. So in such a case, these are all the different uh, combinations are highly used for that uh, uh, snacks food items. Either it can be a cereal-based or pulse-based. So one thing you consider, uh, according to the product nature, and uh, according to the, the, the life of the product, you can increase that uh, barrier properties relevant to the moisture or gases, even in the holders. So in such a case, selecting a proper packaging material, so that can be support you to extend the life. For example, sometimes if you take that aluminum file, it can, uh, it can, um, it can uh, stop the permeation of that light, gases, even that moisture also. So in such a case, uh, combination of that aluminum foil, that polyester, which will have good printing, if you see that inner layer LTP, which will have that good sealing properties. So in such a case, so based on your product nature and uh, life period extensions, you can select your proper packaging material. And nowadays, if you see that eco-friendly eco packaging materials are also coming. For example, this is the one, uh, one thing uh, uh, for the wheat flour they have developed. For example, even if you want to pack some pulse flour, you can take that cotton boxes, inner it is coated with aluminum uh, foil, uh, otherwise that uh, what we can say, uh, metallized layer. And also the top and the bottom will be, uh, a lid is made up of plastics, otherwise it is made up of metals. So this type of eco-friendly uh, packaging materials are also coming in uh, nowadays. So you can easily print and it can be rigid. You can keep it in the retail shop, in the, uh, in the shelves. And also this collection of the packaging material for recycling also will be easy. So that is also coming. And when we come to the labeling, as uh, Madam already told, so considering that FSSI standards, you have to follow this uh, 13 uh, parameters, it has to be printed and uh, that will be easy for the consumers and uh, that is easy for the producers also to follow the the the, 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 the levels and the spoilage rate in the uh, st uh, storage uh, uh, places. And considering that uh, labeling, now we are focusing on this uh, RFID tags because uh, that will be easy for printing on that packaging material. And apart from that, uh, these uh, 13 parameters, you can give more information about your product. So that will be easy for the consumers to select the product from the uh, from the uh, different, uh, uh, what we can say, the competitive uh, uh, market in the uh, pulse-based products in the market. So in such a case, uh, this uh, laser printing or RFID tags. So these are all the things also nowadays coming in the market. So that will support you for easy printing and understanding of your product. So with that, I thank the organizer for giving this opportunity. Thank you so much. So the session was really, really informative. So now uh, we'll be moving ahead with our next technical talk. So for this talk, we have with us Ms. Tonisha Dixit, consultant, PMU Niftam Thanjavo. And she'll be going to provide us insights on the detailed project report preparation on the pulse processing. We welcome you, ma'am. The session is over to you. Good evening, all the participants. So this session uh, will take you through the basics of uh, preparation of detailed project report as a part of this uh, scheme. That uh, So I would like to start with what are the basic elements of a detailed project report for a business to consider. So starting from the very basic question of explaining the problem or the need to identify the customer. So as a uh, business person, uh, whether it is you are starting a new business or you are looking forward to expanding it, the Entrepreneurs should be able to understand and explain the problem that they are going to uh, work upon, the solution that they are providing for that particular problem. So the problem can be uh, from the non-availability of that particular product or the inconvenience regarding availability of the product or the service. So it can be anything. So which is the problem which you are going to cater to? That is the first aspect of it. And the second is who is having that problem. So who are the customer who is having the problem or who you are providing the solution. 
So that is the very first aspect of it. And this answer you will be providing in the TPR, uh, uh, starting with the basic uh, aspect of uh, what your product is going to offer and uh, who are the people who are going to buy it from you. The second aspect is explaining the proposed solution and the uniqueness of the solution. So proposed solution will involve about explaining about how you are going to solve the problem. So maybe you are coming up with a, a convenience packaging, maybe you are coming up with a better delivery system, maybe you are coming up with some solution which is providing better nutrition. So it can be something better, something with no cost, something with convenience. So the proposed solution can be having any of the unique selling propositions and the uniqueness of the solution. So how uniquely you are providing the solution. So if you are saying that uh, people are not having, uh, say, uh, time to uh, the food or say, uh, just uh, prepare the food for cooking, so you are providing the ready to use it. So how unique is the solution? the market full of ready to cook solutions or you are the first one providing it? So that depends, that will also help you understand the credibility and uh, what are the challenges that will be facing while coming up with that particular solution? And the third one is that why will the customer pay for that particular solution? So, you know that there is a problem where the customers are required to uh, work on it. Customers will be ready to buy it. But uh, the way you are providing the solution is it uh, the one for which the customers will pay for the solution? So, ultimately, for any uh, product, maybe innovation may not be innovative, but uh, whatever product you are coming up with, whether the customers are ready to pay for that particular product or solution. So, these are the three elements which will be, uh, the I will be starting to answer to. And the industry or the person who is looking for putting funds into your business will definitely look for these particular solutions into your detailed project report that you will be submitted to. So, this is the very first aspect of it. So, basically, what does the DPR tells you about? It tells you about currently where you are because you will be telling about your strengths and weaknesses. You will tell you why you should be the person to whom the funds should be provided and what strengths you have for running that particular business. Secondly, where you are going. What are the strengths you have for taking the business, proposed business to the next level? And uh, what are the key features? Maybe you might be having a strong team. Maybe you might be having uh, expertise on the technology, you know, commercialize it. So, where, what is the plan which will reach your particular business? In thought, how you are supposed to get there. So, it may involve partnerships, it may involve proposing your business to investors, it may involve taking back to how you are proposing to get them. So these are the key aspects which will be a DPR will be showing to the investor apart from analyzing it. Why will it help the business purpose? So basically, what are the contents of a DPR project? If you look at, we have already uploaded some of the modern DPRs on our website. You can check some of those. If you can see those, there will be broadly these five aspects which the DPR will try to cover. Starting from the introduction, this introduction part will cover what I earlier talked about three questions, answer to those. Secondly, entrepreneur and management team profile. So here we will be telling about the strengths and weaknesses and how your team is going to go ahead with your business on those things. The third aspect is the market analysis, which will involve who are the competitors currently, they are existing, who are the what which are the products that complement or supplement your Product. What are the key enablers in the market that will help you increase your sales or may happen in your sales? So, this is the basic we also call it primary survey or primary market analysis you might have heard. So, these generally are being conducted. Then comes this technical analysis. I will go through in detail also in coming slides. So, technical analysis will definitely be taking care of the equipment and how you are going ahead with the process of charts, what technology you are going to use. That you can see uh, in detail. Now, the session of today's work into technical analysis part, you might have gone across a lot of information about which is the best aspect of uh, getting the equipment or the packaging or these things. So, I won't much, uh, be uh, too much uh, focus into it. 
and last one is the financial analysis. So now, like, like today we will assume for proper manufacturing unit. So, uh, so what does a DPR will have? You will have to put on some basic assumptions. So for example, how much uh, capacity you want to put in the unit. So whether it is, for example, 20 per working days per month you're working, so you often put 50 kg per day. So it will come up to 20 per day per annum. So like this, you have to assume how much is the capacity you're going, wanting to put at the unit. And based on that, Generally, first six months or first one year is considered to be the expansion or construction period. And from the second year onwards, basically, we start operating the business. So, generally, 50-60% capacity only you are able to utilize in the, from the very next second year. Starting from 70%, 80%, depending on the market expansion, depending on the demand, how good your sales are going, this can vary and fluctuate accordingly. So, after that, you also need to understand what the average raw material prices are going in there. So this can be definitely reachable. So you might come across a lot of bottle uh, DPRs. So you need to just have a look at the regional local prices just to go definitely by the modern DPRs and you check the actual costs, actual raw material costs, actual sale prices, what feature you are adding to the final product based on that their sale price will increase, the more value you will add to the product, the more uh, value it will bring the return, it will same prices will also increase. For the recovery rate, the process which you are going to adopt will decide the recovery rate. So, like this, assumptions is required to be made at the very initial stage itself, after which comes the second aspect that is the market growth. So, like you are telling in the previous day, you are telling that one particular terms per annum, we are going to start the business. So, you need to justify uh, like. Is there a demand for that much product? Maybe no. regional, maybe local, maybe uh, if you're putting up like here, you can see the online marketplace also. So nationally, how are you going to go ahead with it? And what is the estimated market potential? So total demand, what is their demand growth in value? So who are the people? Is it for the mass market? So maybe you are coming up with some, uh, some products which are for kids. Maybe you are coming up with some products which are for a specific People. So, uh, like that, who are the customers and what is their demand? Understanding the product and its usage as well. Then, understanding the customer side. So, customer, do you think that mass market means everybody will buy your product? It's generally not the case. It is, it, it, there is, uh, the customer is always segmented. It is segmented based on prices, it is segmented based on the location, geographical location. It is further segmented on the basis of, uh, say, uh, how convenience. You are providing how much convenience, price points, what you are offering to them. Then definitely the purchasing power and the age groups. So these are the various segments of the customer. Then understanding the competitors. So there are two types of competitors. One who are already inviting, coming up with the similar products. And the second who are coming up with the complementary products. So for example, you are coming up with, uh, say, specialized paper or masala paper or something with the uh, additional features. So there might be some other products to complement your product, like this, like, uh, say, for example, uh, some chutneys or something are there which complement your snacks. So when that is in the case, then you need to understand how they are placing their products. So understanding the competitors is also very important. Then pricing. So a price is always neither should neither be too high or too low. It both has got its disadvantages. So you need to decide on the pricing aspect. Then promotion. So as you can see here, there are two methods of promotion. You can see one is on uh, store merchandising and another is on the online website based on that. So you cannot have all the kind of promotions for your product. It needs to be decided how you are going where your customers are to decide that you need to be deciding on promotion. So all these details will be required to be provided in your detailed project report. Then the distribution, how you are going to distribute. So the distribution channel for both of these kind of promotions will be different. If you are selling your products, say in online mode, the distribution channel will differ from those if you are wanting to sell your product to the retailers. So uh, like this, this much clarity you are required to have in your document to let investor understand that you understand your product and its process and its deliverables quite deeply. Then 
Then comes the technical analysis. So I have shown you one is the machine, maybe semi-automatic or batch kind, and another is a fully automated process. So there are certain options available to the entrepreneur to decide on which type of manufacturing process to adopt. And such manufacturing processes comes up with related uh, what we can say requirements. The quantity of manpower, the skill of manpower. All these are decided on the basis of the type of manufacturing process that they are going to decide. Even the raw material, processable varieties, and all those things are also, as in the morning we were discussing, that not all varieties are processable. So, all these awareness is also required. So, then government policies, production scheduling, costing, all these things. So, already we have discussed today in detail about all these aspects. So these are, I have taken up for example. So you are required to detailing of the equipment. For example, the proper making, uh, you might be having a fully automatic single line machine or you might be having different modules in the batch process like the loading, power sheeter, cutter, cutter machine, all these things. Then what are their capacities? What is their costing? So like that, you are required to provide details. Then comes the very crucial part of the project, that is the financial analysis. In fact, there are actually three components. The first one is uh, starting from that. What is the one-time cost that you have to put in your business? So the one-time cost involves... So basically, in the project cost, we don't add the cost of land. It is assumed that the entrepreneur must be having either the land or you have to... So banker's perspective, it is not uh, assumed to add the cost of land into the project cost because... The cost of land in itself will be a very huge amount to add into the budget cost. Then fixed assets generally constitute of uh, basic uh, construction of building and the fixed assets. So fixed assets like uh, list of machineries that we were talking about, then uh, electrical connections or all those things. So one time cost what is incurred by starting business that comes under the fixed assets. Then comes the working capital. So the working capital involves, here you can see in the extreme left, uh, extreme right, right, there is a figure that you can see, wherein in a business, there is always an inventory of uh, raw material, of the product that is under process of the finished goods, all these things are in the factory. So these are the inventory, these are always inventory. So when this inventory plus when you are selling your products with the customers, customers can be the distributors or retailers. So the money is not uh, paid immediately. There is some credit in there. So inventory you have in the factory, plus the credit that is in the market, your credit, minus that money you, you are required to pay to your supplier. So you bought raw materials, you bought finished, uh, you bought packaging materials, all these things you bought. So you also bought a little bit. So some credit will be there also. So total inventory that is there. So the money, basically money brought in the inventory with you, plus the money which is required by you from the market, minus the money which is which you are required to pay to others. So that will be termed as working capital. So basically this is the capital that keeps your business running. This is the uh, amount of money which is required in circulation in your business. Generally, what the problem is, uh, in entrepreneurs face is that while calculating in the initial stage, they calculate only the total one-time cost required and some recurring expenses. They never get in detail towards the working capital calculation. So, this is, this generally leads to the cash crunch. So, that is the reason working capital is a very important part of the project and is required detailed attention in the overall project costing. And finally, the profit and loss. So basically, when you have uh, calculated your one-time fixed cost and then you are calculating your recurring cost that is working capital, so 20 to 30% of your working capital margin comes into your total cost of project. So once that is there, these you can refer in the Modern DPRs that we have shared with you, you can just check all the calculations and how it is done, all these things. This is just for uh, information and sharing these basic details. So then you need to understand the capital loss. So for example, some sales you have made. So after that, uh, from that, you will be reducing the expenses that have been incurred. So total sales might be something 
And from that, all the expenditure of say processing, marketing, all these expenses that will be that will be reduced. What comes is the total uh, profit or loss uh, that will be incurred. And then we can uh, give it for the projection of the number of years which you work. So that will be profit and loss and balance sheet. So these are the basic components that are covered in the DPR. And then it can be further analyzed as lengthy as possible. And it can be in brief also can be uh, shared depending on the investor's requirement. So uh, this is all from uh, my side. Uh, I think uh, you might have on a basic uh, uh, understanding of uh, the components of a DPR and how it is prepared. Uh, the key to this is you should understand the need of preparation of DPR because it is not only for submission, it is also answering your basic questions as we discussed in the early part of the presentation. And that is very important. So uh, you can just uh, check already existing uh, DPRs uh, on our website. And uh, then you can have some realistic uh, figures into it depending on your regional uh, prices and cost of machinery suppliers and all those things. And you just have to take some, uh, refer to some uh, real time costs and move it. And the format is already there. You can just use it as per your uh, requirements. Uh, thank you once again, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for such an informative session. May I now request. Dr. D.V. Chidanan, sir, for the concluding remarks, please. Uh, respected uh, chief guest for today's program, uh, Dr. S. N. Ja, sir, and then uh, guest of honor, Dr. Shiva Sevak, sir, uh, director, ICR, uh, IAPR, Kanpur, and then uh, our director, sir, Dr. C. Anandram Krishnan, sir, uh, and then research persons, faculties, and participants. Uh, good, uh, good evening to all. I think today, now we are coming to the uh, last session. I think in our session, uh, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Jha sir uh, given a very good uh, uh, address for this program and also uh, he explained very briefly about the, the pulse processing and also suitable machineries for the uh, pulse processing and also uh, he explained uh, pulse waste uh, utilization. So very good uh, address. And then I would like to thank you, sir, for uh, today's program and uh, behalf of our institute and uh, director. Once again, I thank you, sir. And also, uh, I would like to thank uh, guest of honor, Dr. Siva Sevak, sir. He also explained the important uh, varieties for processing of uh, pulses and, and also other activities uh, done by the IAP, uh, Indian Institute of Pulse Research, Kanpur, uh, for the uh, upcoming uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, initiatives from the institute. He also explained. Once again, uh, thank you, sir, uh, for this uh, program. And also, I thank to uh, our below the director, sir, Dr. C. Anandram Krishnan, sir, for his uh, continuous support for organizing uh, these events in a uh, successful manner. And also, uh, coming to the uh, technical session, because resource persons, uh, first starting from Rajesh, Kum Rajesh Kumar Vishwakarma, sir, and Dr. Jagan Mohan, and then Ajayan Ariyaran sir, Tirumurugan, and then uh, uh, Tonish Shah, and then Vijay Lakshmi ma'am, and then uh, Anand Kumar sir, and then once again, all the resource person, they given very good insight. If you are having any uh, clarifications or any uh, doubt regarding the body OP and pulse processing uh, pulses, uh, please send a mail to director at iaptt.edu.in or uh, pmfme at iaptt. Uh, dot edu dot in so you can contact through uh, our institute uh, numbers also uh, definitely we will help you uh, for uh, uh, submission of application or uh, any other issues and then uh, uh, finally i thanks to the all participants those who are attending today's program from all over india i think uh, uh, because of uh, up to last uh, around more than 200 participants are attend uh, attended this program once again thank you for all and also, uh, finally, I thanks to, uh, would like to thank our head of the department, faculty, staffs, uh, for their support for the uh, uh, successful uh, organizing this uh, event. And also, special thanks to PMFME team and also the computer team for the support. So, once again, uh, thank you all. Uh, uh, Jai.